indeed it is still our morning belt of our transmission right here on flow 94.9 fm 10 minutes downside the hour of 10 a.m uh today being the 16th day in the month of february 2022 thank you very much for joining us this morning on the platform the pinnacle of all discussions we deal with those critical issues for you we tackle them with decisive analysis so that you can make better decisions in the nearest future so welcome on board the program runs every monday every wednesday and also every friday right here on the flow of god's own state flow 94.9 fm the platform the pinnacle of all discussions my name is michael oni now let's start the conversation this morning we're talking health uh, there is a particular issue that is really bothering me it is bothering you and bothering nigerians as far as the health sector is concerned and um did you know that um as of 2020 that that was the last uh, time uh, research was done on this uh, subject matter nigeria had a doctor to patient ratio of uh, one to two thousand seven hundred and fifty six one i mean one doctor to cater for two thousand seven hundred and fifty six p- uh, patients that's according to the last research that was done I- i'm sure it must have increased uh, looking at uh, the reality on ground today and this is a sharp construct uh, constructs rather to the world health organization's uh, minimum recommended ratio it should be one to 400 or one to 600 that's not even the issue at the last check over 100 medical consultants have left nigeria that's in the last two years over 100 so this morning we're delving into this issue let's look at where the problem is coming from where why we have medical brain drain in the health sector and the challenges of proper healthcare delivery in Nigeria. We look at the states of the Federation and also uh, the federal medical facilities, the public health facilities in the country. One will be asking, maybe for the benefit of uh, uh, those that do not understand what I mean by medical brain drain. Well, the brain drain is the migration of health personnel in search of better standard of living and quality of life, higher salaries, access to advanced technology, and more stable political conditions in different places of the world. So uh, that's what we're looking at uh, this morning on the program, the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions right here on Flow 94.9 FM. The quest for greener pastures by skilled professionals and individuals, both young and old, who have received advanced training in Nigeria has never been as alarming as we have now today. Go to our embassies. You see doctors applying uh, to uh, Jakba. That's the language they use i want to uh run away maybe from the challenges of the country nigeria just like every other african countries have over the years been robbed of have best brains these individuals move to developed countries like the united states like the united kingdom like canada and saudi arabia and use the basic and advanced knowledge they have benefited from nigeria to contribute to the host to their host country and this is the current trend uh, many have attributed it to different causes anyways but we're going to delve into that today let's looking at the wage differential between nigeria and the receiving countries which they've said are so large that even increase in wages cannot affect migration to developed countries apart from wages uh, the working conditions also we we'll get to look at that this morning on the platform it's not even only the doctors uh uh, information obtained from the nursery, uh, nursing, rather nursing and midwifery uh, council of the United Kingdom revealed that a total of 3,782 Nigerian trained nurses were granted licenses to operate in England and Scotland, according to uh, the last uh, statistics uh, from from the council uh, in 2001. In 2021 only 3,782 Nigeria trained nurses were granted licenses to operate in England and Scotland and um, it was said that it is responsible uh, this information has analyzed uh, England gave out a total of 3,725 licenses in 2021 Scotland gave 57 licenses to Nigeria trained nurses so this is a, a situation that is worry worrisome that's uh it is uh, a current trend that we want to delve into the situation this morning and have an idea of what is going on and how can we find a lasting solution 
to this uh, current train not a very good one anyways let's delve into the conversation i have my guest joining me virtually this morning uh, dr chimeze okwono dr chimeze is the uh, nigeria medical association chairman abia state uh, chapter uh, doctor good morning to you thank you very much for joining us on the platform on flow fm yeah thank you good morning you're welcome uh, thank you for inviting me to be you're welcome it's unfortunate that this is a current trend affecting a sector that you are a stakeholder are you not worried with uh, the brain drain current currently ravaging the health sector in nigeria w- what's your take before i delve it we'll delve into the um effects and also uh, how we can find solutions to this yeah um i'm very worried mm. and um we are worried in the Nigerian Medical Association about this effect of brain drain. And um, the, it has had uh, very negative consequences on healthcare delivery across mm. the state and across the country. Um, we already have four indicators, and the brain drain is worsening the situation. The WHO report uh, revealed that Nigeria has uh, doctor patient ratios of about four doctors for every 10,000 patients. Mm. That's about one doctor for 2,500 patients. And we have about five hospital beds for every 10,000 patients. So we found out that this is, this is a very, a very this, is, this is the WHO report. Mm. And we found out that we did, this is against the recommendation of the WHO of one doctor for 400 to 600 patients. Okay. Nigeria is talking about one doctor for 2,500 patients. And uh, uh, with over 200 million people in Nigeria, it will take Nigeria about 25 years to produce enough doctors to cater for the population if no one lives in the first place. If no one lives at all, it will take Nigeria 25 years to meet up with the WHO recommendation. So, but with the exodus of doctors out of the country, it is worsening this uh, particular situation. Mm-hmm. Just wow. from between 2000 and uh, between 2000. Between the year 2020 and 2020, mm. that is ongoing. Nigeria has lost about 100 consultants to brain drain, and I mean these are these are people that spent six to seven years in the medical school and spent another six to seven years specializing in one field of the devil or the other. Have worked as consultants in hospitals. So a good number of them served between one year and ten years of service delivery and before you know what is happening they will leave the shores of this country to other places and this is very disturbing mm-hmm. and generally the, in fact, between the same between uh, uh 2017 to 2020 we lost about 4,536 medical doctors to saudi arabia alone so you find out that um, if this trend continues on a better, we are going to have very worse, uh, we are going to have very dangerous uh, future in the healthcare delivery. Hmm. Uh, what, what are the things that are causing this? Thing? Okay, I, I, I was just before we delve into uh, the hmm. causes of brain drain in the health sector uh, and, and the reasons for the max exodus of doctors, who should we blame here? Uh, many are saying maybe the doctors are not patriotic enough and they're saying that they are uh, badly trained uh, at public expense looking at uh, the subsidized rate at which the subsidized uh, um, expenses for going to medical school and of course at uh, at our uh, public uh, uh, facilities i'm talking about the universities it doesn't cost as much to uh, go and get trained as a doctor like you have in other countries so they are blaming the the doctors and saying they are not patriotic i don't know how you want to react to that dr uh chimese this morning Uh, no 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 it it is um these are these are information that are born out of uh, out of uh, misinformation okay um that is that, that brings our attention you see, it is when you look at the causes of brain drain that you realize you you cannot be in a position to say what is possible, uh, well, how whether the doctors are patriotic or not. Mm. Now, what are the basic causes of brain drain? One is poor welfare and remuneration of the doctors. Secondly, is unfavorable government policy, and thirdly, is insecurity. 
and if you face these issues one after the other you find out that you let's let's ask ourselves where are we where did we open when a doctor in nigeria in terms of uh, payment when a doctor in saudi arabia or in uh, us or uk is paid eight to ten times the salary of a medical doctor in nigeria and you and you find out that okay when was the last time they reviewed these salaries upwards but the economy keeps on uh, uh getting bad and we are facing a similar situation in we are we go to the same market and do the same thing with every other person but the remuneration is very poor and uh, on top of it uh there are a lot of uh, policies that the government are bringing up which are okay. anti the government uh, anti the medical practice what are some of these policies there is a there some uh, just a wage supplement that is being given to people that do dangerous duties which is called the hazard allowance mm. my brother do you believe that it's just five thousand naira per month that the doctors have been receiving i for, thought it's for, been for the increased hazard. to now it has 000. been reviewed as at the meeting the national council of establishment had as of uh, one month ago this salary this uh this hazard money has allowance. been increased yes the hazard allowance has been increased to between fifteen thousand and thirty two thousand and um, what effect has it done yes that is uh that one can look at it and, and say okay the government has uh, initiated a step in the right direction but let's see how it goes. Now that's after they years went, of agitation they, 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 they went ahead to erode what is called the relativity that existed between the doctors and other healthcare workers that mm. is the relativity that exists and that existed or that exists between the doctors and other healthcare workers which is a reflection of the professional status of the work and the services we deliver so when you are in the process of solving one problem you are bringing up another problem you keep the healthcare sector boiling over and over all the time secondly mm. the consistent attacks on medical training and the uh, re uh, residency training in this country has never given peace a chance and these are the policies that government has brought up that are causing problems you wake up one day and you you feel that the postgraduate medical college whose responsibility is it to train specialist doctors that uh, the doctors need to acquire extra certification in form of phd or whatever in order to continue their training of uh, medical students and achieve the highest of their profession and the doctor said ah, what what kind of policy is this we, we so for every day you get to hear one thing or the other okay look at the funding of the health sector the who recommended that uh, 15 percent of the annual budget be dedicated to the healthcare sector and went ahead to say that in Niger okay in the nigerian uh, condition one percent of the annual budget should be dedicated to a fund called the consolidated revenue fund so let us come back home and ask ourselves how far have we implemented it we have been battling with just about seven percent of the annual budget to the health sector that's just mm -hmm. about between 6.5 7 percent 8.5 percent no, we have never reached the 15 percent that is recommended and it has a lot of implications the implications are the healthcare managers are finding it difficult to employ because for you to employ you must have money to pay the people that are employing and you see a lot of doctors still hanging around looking for employment in a in a country that has been ravaged by pandemic in a country where the health care workers are migrating those that are around are still looking for job in the government establishment wow Go around the government establishment and find out when last did they make recruitment of resident doctors, when last did they recruit consultants. And you, so you see doctors ending up with a good number of them after graduation and going for youth service. They go to mission hospital and a private practice. They write, they write their entrance examination and still hold their certificate for up to two, three years looking for work in a government setup. And this is establishment where people are migrating out. So the, the thing is that uh, the funding of the health sector has been so poor infrastructural development is is near is getting poorer and poorer yes government is making efforts but i think the problem is funding priority prioritization what are our priorities we have money in this country but where are we prioritizing it? health is uh, wealth and you need to prioritize health in all dimensions it is a healthy person that can pursue politics it's a healthy person that can pursue education health is very central to every uh, key deliverables in the economy so and they talk about insecurity how many doctors have been kidnapped in the recent times? How many of their family members have been kidnapped? Insecurity is a problem that the government needs to sit up and tackle because you find it difficult even coming out for call in the night when you are called on, even within the hospital premises where you are working. If, okay, in situations where they need to uh, transport a, a doctor from one region to the other, 
to attend to an emergency you may not be able to do that because of insecurity mm. so go from problem of insecurity go from problem of policy development and go from problem of remuneration where did the doctor uh, get it wrong where how is it that blames are now coming to medical school how many of us we, we are read on government scholarship when we are in the school what we paid are standard fees that uh, the, the the country the students are uh, pay and you can count the number of uh, doctors that uh, got any form of scholarship maybe those that got got from chevron shell and other mobile or any other company so i uh, every doctor most of the i can clearly say that more than 70 percent of doctors are we are trained out of pocket uh, training so yeah. it has no basis so that's why i say that those that are saying that are saying it out of misinformation yeah. because these are uh, it's a impactable trend okay you you for two years you worked outside this country perhaps in the uk take you about eight years to achieve a similar salary in uh, nigeria so what i will spend eight years uh, doing in nigeria my colleague that just traveled outside me will just achieve that within two, in years. two years so you see yeah, so so i think we need to really sit down and find a solution to these problems Interesting. because we cannot continue we, in this trajectory with uh, you've spoken so much about uh, the manpower area what about the uh, facilities in our uh, uh, in our public uh, health institutions especially uh, the states of the federation and also uh, the uh, federal for belong the, those ones belonging to the federal government you've spoken so much about uh, the brain drain and the personnel how they are moving out how are those facilities at least we should have something we are doing right even if we are not getting the person uh, uh, taking care of the personnel right at this point in time maybe the facilities are in place anyway um in terms of facilities um uh, let us start from home you know and ask ourselves how many general hospitals and primary health centers are functional within our environment mm. if you if you the anchor of this program gets sick the first thing that will occur to you is you yourself it's either a private hospital or the federal medical center if we can be true to ourselves so let us start with the facilities that are local and find out that we really need to see how to sit down as a government and assist the government to get up our facilities up and functioning the primary health centers are located at such are supposed to be located at traceable distances in other states alone we have about 292 comprehensive primary health centers one in each political world should we get each of these primary health centers fully functional to take care of the basic health care needs of the patient? It will solve 40% of our health care needs in, as a state. And this is the same problem that is found in many other states of the Federation. So if you talk about the uh, primary health centers and general hospitals, we have a problem across the Federation, especially at the general hospital level. In fact, in some states, there is a great... A, the general hospitals have been threatened to close up. Because while the federal government is funding the tertiary institution, the federal government is also funding the primary health centers through the Consolidated Revenue Fund. Mm. So the state is left to grapple with the general hospitals. And that is now dependent on the captain of the day, the government of the day. What policies do they have for the general hospitals? And uh, 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 the shadow of general hospitals across the states of the federation is a reflection of the kind of government that are existing in each of these states and their priorities and their challenges. So what I'm trying to say is that all over the country, we have problems with uh, uh, the facilities. And even if the facilities are there, I mean by facilities, not only structures in terms of building. Okay. Who are those that make these buildings very functional? You see, you, 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 if you don't have personnel, no matter how beautiful a building is, there mm. are no nurses in it, there is no lab scientists in it, there is no doctor in it. It doesn't make a, 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 a sense in terms of healthcare delivery. So, you, it's, something, it's, something, it's a development that goes hand in hand. Because the health the facilities in terms of building, in terms of machines, in terms of services, in terms of maintenance and monitoring their use, they all need to be carried alongside with the person that is handling it, which is the personnel that is handling these things. So we are not talking about facility drain. We are talking about human drain. Mm -hmm. It is human beings that are moving from one country to the other, from a place that they are less comfortable to where they are more comfortable. Buildings don't move. 
and I'm going to show you if these buildings have a way of moving. They will all move. <laughs> hmm. Okay, let's look at some of the dangers uh, if the federal government uh, continues uh, paying deaf ears to uh, some of these agitations uh, by professionals like you. Uh, quite unfortunate. Uh, I don't know if uh, the private sector uh, in the uh, the private sector is really bridging that gap that is being created now uh, by the public facilities that we have and also the federal government that we're talking about the brain drain we're talking about people living but we have uh, private facilities although not everyone can afford to uh, pay uh, that much to enjoy the best of uh, health care in the country are the private uh, is the private sector bridging that gap created by this brain drain um i think the private sectors are trying but there is a limit to what every a private sector can do the in terms of healthcare service delivery the private sectors are trying but of, of course basic what are the basic healthcare needs of the population mm. non-communicable disease to communicable diseases we talk about malaria United tract infection, chest infection, we talk about bones, road traffic accidents and all this. So we have some specialized hospitals uh, across the state that in one way or the other tries to bridge in, in this healthcare gap and a good number of their services are affordable. Um, however, there's a limit to what a private healthcare sector can do. Mm. Uh, a private healthcare sector cannot train medical doctors and produce them for the country. So it takes a lot of effort to build up a teaching hospital privately owned. So we can, if we are thinking of uh, efforts that have national impact, we think of training of our manpower. They can only be done in the teaching hospitals that have accreditation for both undergraduate training and postgraduate training. And that can only be effectively done, affordably done in within the government setting. A private hospital cannot do all these things efficiently. For a private hospital, to produce the manpower needs you need in this country, then we have to pay through our nose. So I can say that in terms of service delivery, the, the private sectors are, are bridging the gap, but in terms of uh, training and in terms of research, we are still not there. Mm. The private sectors will find the goal. These are So there are institutions that are, uh, that are designed with core mandates, like the teaching hospitals. Their mandate is service delivery, research and training. So while service delivery part of their work can be done by private hospitals to at a reasonable extent, mm. no private hospital will efficiently take over the training and no private hospital can efficiently, at the reduced cost, take over the research uh, activities that are supposed to be going on in the uh, government setting. So there are limits to what the private sector can do. Mm, interesting. I want to really appreciate you, Doctor, this morning. We've been able to pick, uh, we picked uh, three points uh, from uh, our conversation this morning. The poor welfare and remuneration, the government should look into that. And also, reversal of the unfavorable policies and also tackling security. These, I believe, will uh, deal with the brain drain that is already uh, dealing with the health sector in Nigeria. Yeah, All right. yeah. and I think we need to minimize on the pool factors. Mm. and you know try as much as possible and domesticate the pull factors and minimize the push factors mm. what are the things that are pulling doctors out of the country the, the, the remunerations and the payments Imagine, okay you employ a doctor today and you are paying two hundred and twenty thousand. i don't know whether you have seen political gatherings and the kind of uh drinks and uh, you've seen the kind of allowances that are being paid to some people and you see this kind of you know and when you compare it with the salary you pay a doctor, a medical doctor trained to save lives in the government setting, you find out that uh, you are is is somehow it's a far joke. cry. So I feel that even those that are li that are living the urban areas and are going to the rural population, very rural population, we are finding it difficult to pay the rural allowances. Mm. Why? I mean, I think these are the motivating factors that will make somebody to leave the comfort of a, an urban area and go to the rural area. And in the midst of all these things. You are still owing somebody 10 months, 15 months, 22 months, 23 months. These things are things that crack the brains. They, they are things that are very difficult to resolve. Mm. So it, it is high time that the government of the day all over the country sits down to resolve the problem of the workers in their states. Those that are working with the state government are those that are worse hit 
with when it comes to remuneration problems. Those that are working with government, uh, federal government, are hit also when it comes to fav unfavorable policies. Mm. So, but the, the financial aspect of it, states need to sit down and look at their healthcare workforce mm. and solve their problems. Nurses are living also. Nurses are living in rooms. In fact, the, the, the doctors are living equally. So, these things need to be curtailed. And there's no how you can stop people from moving. So, yeah, uh, it takes a lot to right. train. You can imagine somebody like me now carrying my bag and said, I'm leaving the country. After I have acquired six years training in the medical school, I have worked as a consultant for seven years, six years now, and I'm super specialized in kidney transplantation. And they are only working in only the establishment that does kidney transplantation in Southeast Nigeria. Mm. And I carry my bag and said, I'm leaving to the UK. You know the implication that, that, that of that? That will be the end of the kidney country. transplantation so, in so, the South. Uh, you can imagine, you can imagine, and such are, and these are the way where some people live critical sectors mm. in the economy. In fact, you come to the tertiary institutions now and you ask of this doctor, ask of this, and they tell you, this one has left, this one has left, this one has left. You cannot comfortably engage on some key services. So you don't know whether you are improving or not. Because at the time you want to initiate policies that, okay, oh, I want to start a brain surgery in this hospital. I want our center to be a center of excellence in delivery of brain surgeries. But as you are developing that policy, you are not in the mind of the doctor who is in his office, in his room. Mm. And as you have finished developing that policy, you are seeing a resignation letter or a letter, a letter of leave of absence for two years or a study leave or whatever. For two years, three people that are supposed to uh, be key in that delivery of that services are living and you cannot stop them the worst you can do is say no and they will, they will drop their resignation letters they already have offer job offers with a lot of incentives people travel out and they get loan car loans they get building loans and they get a lot of incentives over and they pay over the years so i think the government need to sit down and minimize the pool factors mm. and uh, find as much as possible and minimize some of these things that are pushing our Healthcare right. workers because it has effect on maternal mortality. We it has effect on uh, infant mortality. It has effect on our health indices all over the country. And we need to increase the funding of the healthcare sector. If you look at the budgetary allocations to health, you find out that in, in I think that was in 2012. What the from if you dissect the budget of the federal government of Nigeria, you find out that the healthcare what it was allocated for healthcare delivery of the indigenous of Nigeria. I think about 2012 or 2014. It's about 1,300 naira. That is what the government plans to spend on healthcare of every citizen in the country. When other countries are talking about higher uh, mm. amount of money, so we need to really sit down and allocate more funds to the health sector. Seven percent of the national budget is not at, is not good. Let All us right. increase it to All near right, twelve yeah. to fifteen percent, and we'll be you know, we will start achieving some successes in the healthcare uh, sector. Dr. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. We'll be, you've been speaking with Michael Oni on Flow FM. Thank you very much for joining us this morning on the platform on Flow FM. Thank you. All Thank right. You Do enjoy the rest you. of your day. All right. Uh, we take a break now. When we return, we continue the conversation. But uh, the second half of the program, we're going to domesticate this and uh, see how it is affecting us right here in Abia State. And uh, of course, uh, look at. Uh, if it is possible uh, for my next guest to, to get the number of nurses and uh, the health workers that have uh, um, jet out of the country uh, from Abia State and how is it affecting uh, the health sector uh, in the state. It is the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions right here on Flow 94.9 FM. Uh, yes, indeed, it is still the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions right here on Flow 94.9 FM Wednesday edition. And uh, we're talking health today. We're looking at the medical brain drain and the challenges of proper healthcare delivery in Nigeria. And uh, we spoke with uh, Dr. Chimese Okwonu. He's the Abia State uh, chap uh, cha Chairman the Nigeria Medical Association, Abia State Chapter uh, Chairman. And uh, let's domesticate the conversation and bring it back home also as we uh, bring in uh, another guest on the program this morning who is joining us virtually. Uh, Comrade Okoro Bunaya, he is the uh, chairman of Johisu, uh, that's the Joint Health uh, uh, Sector Union, uh, Abia State Chapter. Comrade, good morning to you and thank you for joining us on the platform on Flow FM. Good morning. All right, thank you. I'm sure you are aware of what is happening, the issue of brain drain among uh, medical professionals. It is not new, the recent surge, which has become increasingly troubling. 
uh, the trend of doctors, nurses, other health uh, workers uh, jetting out of the country, migrating to other countries, which is at an all-time high. Uh, what is the situation in Abia State? Are we also experiencing the same in the health sector right here in Abia State? And if you, if it is possible, if you can give us numbers and how is it affecting us? Yeah, um, the situation is so pathetic that uh, if something is not being done, mm. very soon we'll be in a state of sorry. Um, the number of health workers that have uh, migrated out of the shores of this country is too numerous to mention. For instance, mm. in Federal Medical Center alone, more than hundreds of nurses. And the same thing is applicable to the state hospitals mm. and other health centers. You come to laboratory scientists, the pharmacists, and a lot of them. A lot of them have left the shores of this country in search of a greener pasture in other other countries. Mm. And I begin to wonder why would the white man want uh, so in there to get us to come over? One thing is certain that we have sharp brain. We have people that knows what they are doing and we have capable hands in this country but the government they are not helping matters that is just the problem mm. and uh, let me say that uh, a lot of issues have contributed to this uh, ugly situation this health personnel did not leave the shores of this country because they want to do, go go across the uh, go over to that, the, those places. It's because of the working condition. It's nothing to write home about. Secondly, their remuneration is nothing to write home about. Thirdly, you see, our government they came up with one type of. Uh, uh, law or the order that make it unconducive for these people to work favorably in this country. Mm. Take for instance, a nurse that is in Congress 7 or 8 is barely taking 160 something thousand. A doctor in the health sector, a, I mean, a, a, a doctor, yes, that's what, uh, let me say that he started. Not a consultant. Okay. That's a he resident doctor. A resident doctor. Okay. It's all collecting just a little something above 260. But you see that our politicians, the government of the day, what they spend in what some of their programs, you could then you that I, you, you you call yourself a professional, you start thinking twice upon the number of years our health officers health workers, health professionals spent in the universities mm -hmm. and so and in their, in their professional areas. Still, they are being paid in mega sum. Whereas their counterparts who are opportune to go across, somebody is being paid in dollars. A dollar here is, let's say, 500 naira. It's a over dollar. 500 in the black market. Okay, I'm just taking it that way. Yes. 500 naira, a dollar. And these people are being paid on an hourly. And they are being paid $1,500 per hour. They are being paid, depending on your level of uh, specialization, You are. they are being paid $3,000 per hour. Mm. And at the end of the day, you that is working from the first day of the month to 30th or 31st day of the month, you are given 300 or 280,000 naira as a doctor. And as a nurse, you are given 170,000 naira. Compare it to the value of naira and dollar. 
you see that it seems as if we are wasting our time here i don't blame them but we continue pleading with them that go into anywhere you go there's no place that is better than home well it is, but people, it, yes uh, uh, come here go on please yeah but you see our people they said first thing first it is when you are alive that you render services mm. if you're sick because government did not pay you what they're supposed to pay you you can't be able to attend to other patients how, how can a, 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 a professional a health worker stay up to 10 months 15 months 20 months 24 months without any salary and you expect the person to work effectively to attend to others to attend to his own or her own issues to take care of his family or extended family and still be alive okay i i i, I understand that uh, there are some uh uh, organizations uh, owned by the government right here in Abia State owing also as much as 20 months, 24 months. Uh, I think Abia State University Teaching Hospital. Am That's I correct? True. Okay. Yeah. Are we also experiencing brain drain in that institution due to a lot of uh, a lot of them. A lot of. Let me tell you, one of mo the most finest consultants, I mean specialist hmm. that this country have provided uh, produced in the time of came from as you said teaching i'm telling you most of them that when, whenever you talk about the best brand in the world when it comes to specialities you talk of some of them that graduated from as you teaching hospital but where are they now where are they okay how, how can we put an end to this ugly trend because uh, if care is not taken uh, if it continues uh, we may not have uh, doctors again to treat us if we are sick especially in the public facilities how can it's we put an end doctor. to this and the nurses it's too then the health uh, other health, health professionals workers. that you've mentioned health workers in general hmm. medical and health workers in general if nothing is being done, one thing we are pleading and we have been advising the government, we lack, I, I, I mean, good, uh, profitable amenities. Hmm. Two, you know, insecurity, this insecurity. Yes. It's another thing. If you can't, in countless time, most of our doctors or other health workers we are kidnapped because these people thought that they are they, they are, they are rich well. okay they are rich and when they are kidnapped they will be asked to give a ransom of a fabulous uh, fabulous amount that is in millions whereas these people have been owed 10 months 15 months 24 months and in uh, some cases they are being killed because they can't afford that uh, ransom. Well, quite unfortunate J just before i let you go because of our time this morning let, let me uh, bring in this i know the back and forth uh, between uh, the johisu and the abia state government concerning the payment of salaries and uh, other entit uh, uh, entitlement uh, that is meant for the workers of abia state university uh, teaching hospital in aba uh, what is the present situation there was the issue of verification uh, saying we are going for verification no we won't accept this you should pay us the 24 months what is the present situation have you uh, have you reached a truce yeah we you know the verification is not uh, suspending the strike mm. we told them the verification if it's it seems uh, if it is uh, for your own good go and do verification because what I understood is that uh, maybe they want to ascertain those that are still working. But Just as the, 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 they are that institution is still on strike, I believe. Yes. Okay. And the cause of it is that they have been owed 24 months. In December, when we had a meeting with the government, the government of uh, they agreed to be paying them to pay them two months after December 2021 later they were paid one month mm. and on close investigation we we, uh, we were made to understand that even that one month 
was uh, short of uh, uh, nine million. And since that December till now, they have not been paid. Hmm. I mean that of uh, that money should have that should have been paid on December. Okay. Because of nine million, the money was not released. The workers because it was short. It was short nine million to make two yes. months promised by the government. Yes. Hmm. And they were not paid. And uh, that now December have passed, January have passed. We are now in in, in February. Another month has added to the old one. Who is fooling who? That is why we are saying we are not helping us. The government of the day should help us so that we can help this administration. All right. I need to we get... thank them. We, we, we are grateful for the 12 months they paid uh, to HMB. Uh, the, those that have been owed 19 months, they paid them 12 months okay. and, on basis. And we are grateful. We say, okay, please make sure that at least every month you pay one month so that the, the, the number of months that is being owed will not continue by the month. All right. Interesting. All right, Comrade Ogbonna, I want to really appreciate you. Thank you very much. I have to let you go now because we need to get reactions on the phone lines. Uh, but thank you very much for your analysis this morning. Uh, we will return to your event unfolds, especially yeah, as far as this what issue. Saying, what we are saying to the government is that mm. please, they should pay workers their salary. Mm. And this brand that we are talking about, when you have poor remuneration, people will continue going out of this country because they are looking for greener pastures. And our facilities are in deplorable conditions. In our 17 local government, the general hospitals we have and the uh, health centers are nothing to write home about. Mm. Let them fortify those places with uh, uh, equipment. All right, comrade. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning on the platform. We do appreciate you. All right. You. The lines are very much open. 0808-182-6949. I'm seeing your comments already on Facebook. I'm going to run through them also before I step out of the studio. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash flow 949 FM. Hello. Good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Good morning, my colony. You're welcome. Who say my name? I'm calling from Omar. All right. Michael. The truth remains the situation of Nigeria today and the situation of medical doctor. Everybody, almost all of them would like to leave the country. Not even, not only the medical doctors, even both of us. I don't know about you. If I have any chance to leave the country today, I will. I will just find my way out of this country because of how things are. And secondly, I want to talk about, I know they, 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 they've been told, uh, many promises have been made to them. Uh, yes, quickly. Is without being fulfilled, so they should consider in the other way. And most of them, there are so many incompetent people that are claiming to be medical doctors. If you go to FMC with for how they matric these people, their patients, these aspects are supposed to be looked into because many uh, of them you see people losing their lives on daily basis because of the right, way so say, man, they, your, your time is medical doctors up. Are Th treating them. Thank, thank you very much. Hello, good morning Michael. to you. Oh, me, you're welcome, Mr. Enoch. My name is Enoch. All right. In addition to the uh, reasons given by your guests, mm. I think other reasons are higher value of other countries' currencies over Naira. Okay. Currently, one dollar one dollar is equal to about five hundred Naira or there about. That's five hundred. Then one pound, one pound is uh, even higher. So somebody who works in Nigeria, he may work for ten years and he may not be able to achieve much like uh, building houses and all that. But somebody who was uh, overseas may be able to build houses and uh, ride uh, those cars. Another thing is the uh, non-payment of uh, salaries. It, it's not there. Mm. Also, those who live there enjoy better uh, developed uh, environment and social amenities. Another one is also uh, the mentality of having higher regard for those who live overseas. Mm. I think some, some people right. say he, he lives uh, overseas. Uh, okay, that kind of mentality. It's also mm. another thing. So thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Enoch. Hello. Oh, good morning you. to you. Hello. Hello. Good, good morning. Good morning, uh, Radio Senator. Yeah, this is Radio Senator calling for the second All right. I think uh, that is very clear. I think the government has to wake up. Both mm. states, especially that of our state government. 
it's very doom for the uh, head paper in Asia. So here, Soto Sadiho uh, held uh, for 25 months, 30 months, this and that. I think government should change their heart and take the responsibilities of the obvious uh, workers seriously. And the wrong advisor insists from advising the government wrongly that for a start, generate money, pay yourself. Why the federal government pay the for a start, other states pay the for a start, and we are taking that for granted. Mm. So they should sit up, not only in the health sector, what about the education sector? Yeah, the GSS is made for teachers and not be paid. So these are the things the government should sit up. Right. What is supposed to do, and the government themselves should be credited enough to understand because under President Muhammad Ibrahim, he has tried enough is at least to consider them based on what is happening before and what is happening now. They should be patriotic. Both right. the so government and the, the workers said that to reach to compromise. Thank you, Radio Senator. Do you appreciate it? Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning, Mr. Mike. You're welcome. Yeah, Mr. Gibbs, coming from Madison. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Honestly, it is man's humanity to man. Mm. But the Bible condemns who cannot pay the employee. So they, I don't know what is wrong with other segments. Particularly, regional governments pay the health sector. But we send this same government and we seek to give some excuses about the, the health sector. Mm. Themselves, when they are sick, they leave this state and go to other countries for their health conditions. If these people did not make use of their health of available, would they be treated over there? Yeah. You know, like, 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 what right. you have in your own is better than what you don't have outside. Take care of what you have and you'll be useful for you. All right. It's Thanks. unfortunate that our government has taken the, the health sector as nothing. All right, thank you Most for of sharing. Your children are in that room. Thank you but for sharing. But I believe that one day, sharing. God will do the best for us. Your thoughts with us, we do appreciate thank it. You. Also, Omaga Francis from Amangunze Enugu says, Good morning, Arua Uka, as uh, Sir Ike says. Great job, Michael. It is important to prioritize the health center in Nigeria. Increased, uh, increase or improve infrastructural development will go a long way alongside their welfare too. Consider the high cost of becoming medical doctor in Nigeria or anywhere else in the world. Oko Namdi says, our politicians are playing politics with the welfare of its citizens. It is so pathetic and painful. No policies and programs for Nigerian citizens. Chinedo Kafo says, good morning, Michael. Corruption and colossal leadership failure has frustrated the institutions we have in Nigeria. We are discussing about the migration and med of medical personnel to other nations, uh, which is becoming worrisome. What do you think if lecturers and teachers have their way? What of the civil servants? How many youths want to remain in the country after graduating? My brother, there is problem. Restructuring and new constitution are the things that can help us. If public office holders, by the compulsion of laws, start accessing public facilities in this country, things will change. A lot of things institutionally and structurally need to be put in place. Thank you, Chino Dioka, for on our Facebook page. And thank you for joining us this morning. Many thanks to my producer, uh, Samson Eze and Ezine Okoro. And the guys behind the visuals on our Facebook page, Chinedu and Stanley. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, the program returns on Friday. My name is Michael Oni.